I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement What's up, wrestling car collectors? Uh, welcome to yet another edition of WTC TV. Uh, this episode, I am honored to have on the guy from Cards. <laughs> Come on, what's your guys' name? Cards, subject to change. That's a cool name. That's it. That's it. It's honored. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I feel honored because you guys have been putting out car, uh, products, uh, whether it be cards and pins and whether stuff you've been putting out for, for, for years. And about a year ago, I reached out to, well, I reached out to Anthony Green first. Then I also reached out to you when I found you guys were associated. And yep. uh, it just, schedules never worked out. You're a busy guy doing both uh, merchandising stuff. You're also a pro wrestler yourself. Um, yep. it, it's just, uh, it, it's just never worked out. And I'm so happy now to have you on because, I mean, your guys' cards have been kind of a talk you know, for a while now because there's some cool designs for cool people. And it's just, uh, indie cards are going crazy right now, man. So. Uh, Todd Graham, how are you? Hey, uh, it's good to be here. Uh, it's this whole thing. I'm going to just, I'm just going to say this from the jump. Um, I never expected any of this. <laughs> <laughs> I never expected anything that I was doing, uh, to blow up the way it has, uh, cards subject to change, uh, as a quote unquote company, uh, is just me. And, um, you know, Anthony came along real early in the process and uh, he actually named us. And I was just like, that's a, that's a neat name. I'll keep that. And then um, and then when he got let go from the WWE, that's when he started talking about uh, the, the card subject to change set. And it's kind of been catching fire ever since we started announcing stuff on it, which once again, I'm surprised. I'm not surprised, but I am surprised. Um, I mean, because it's not the yeah. first cards that you guys have put out. I mean, you guys have done one-offs for a lot of uh, indie uh, talent. Yeah, we've done one-offs for indie talent. We've done um, full sets for a handful of wrestling promotions. Um, I actually have the list. Uh, I, I believe <laughs> as complete a list as I was able to scrounge together in 10 minutes um, <laughs> that we could rattle off at some point. But uh, yeah, you know, um, I joke, I joke. I'm, I'm a big self depreciator when it comes to humor and um, the joke that I usually land on for these cards is, you know, I saw one of my cards sell for $3,000 on eBay about a month ago. And all I could think was if that person only knew that it was a screaming fat bald guy in his underwear <laughs> with a large pair of scissors, these ones uh, just cutting up cardboard, you know, I don't think it would have mattered because I think uh, card collectors, they, 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 they like their shit. Yeah, they really <laughs> so, do. They really do like their shit. You know, and um, uh, I mean, let's, let's go with that list. Let's start off with what's the first, let's just start from the beginning. All right. Um, I will rattle through this and then you can ask me any questions you sure. want when I'm done. So here we go. Uh, Alicia Edwards, three sets and kiss cards. Anthony Green, three sets. Uh, Brett Ryan Goslin, three uh, two sets. No kiss Brian cards Malonis. for Anthony Green. No kiss cards for <laughs> Anthony Green. Um, Brian Malonis, Brooke Adams did kiss cards. Uh, Coach C, Danger Boy, uh, Danger Boy Alfredo, that is, and Wolverine. Uh, Familiar Strangers, Limitless Wrestling, four series and a special moment series. Uh, Lucky Pro Wrestling, we did two series and some one-off special cards. The New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, um, uh, Northeast Championship Wrestling, uh, Perry Von Vicious, The Proving Ground, that's my wrestling promotion, two series there. Uh, Robbie the Giant, The Warlord, yes, that that Warlord. Yep. Uh, Burned by Callow, Zero One USA, which was Anthony Green's operation. We did a, a Gangrel card for him. Um, Atlantic Pro Wrestling, Gal Barkai, uh, Randy Rivera, Ellis Bartno and Sigma, Jazz, Johnny Swinger, Just Incredible, Aldo Montoya, JT Energy, Blitzkrieg Pro, we're doing the second series for them already. Caden Green and of course cards subject to change. So there's a lot of uh, it's a lot of names on that list, and I'm fairly certain that I am missing a few. So that's a lot, man. Uh, and and they, they, when did you first start noticing that these cards were kind of taking off for you? Um, because well, I mean, I, I can I can go right away and say 
Limitless cards became like that became the thing. And we did a whole roundtable segment with the three guys who probably specialize in that more than anybody on the planet. Uh, and it's an amazing card that's really taken off as like a holy grail almost for indie cards. All right. Well, let's talk about those limitless cards because um, initially, um, right at the very beginning, the first cards that I made. And I probably should have pulled them from the uh, from the collection to show you because uh, I still have them. Um, they were put together with tape. Uh, it was before I got a, the process down, all that. And <laughs> and I literally, I it was right at the beginning of the proving ground, um, right before I started officially recording tapings and whatnot. And basically, what I did is I took everybody that I had on the roster, you know, took promo shots of everybody and made cards of everybody to use as a booking tool. So it would literally be like, okay, next show, so-and-so versus so-and-so. Now they're out of the deck. Now what else can we throw together? (laughs) It was just, I got bored one night and it was just something I did. Um, Showed it to a couple of people. Then what I did, um, as I showed it to a couple of people and they thought it was cool. And of course they asked for their own cards. So uh, about a year goes by and I put together uh, the first proving ground set were, which were on the, it was like turquoise and black. And I think I forget how many cards are in the set, but there's, there was a bunch and we managed to do um, like gold foil special cards, but it was only like one or two of each card. So very rare, Uh, Mm -hmm. but I wasn't thinking of any of that shit. I was just like, Hey, something for the merch table. Now that we're doing real shows. Yep. Um, So that's when, you know, Anthony Green, Anthony Green and I had worked together on a show back in 2013. I remember saying the first night I saw him, I said, five years, you'll be on my TV. I was off by two years. It was seven. (laughs) Uh, But we but we had been cool ever since then. And um, he saw what I was doing with the cards. He asked if I could do a card set with him. I said, sure. We mimicked the 91 Impel WCW cards. Uh, of which I'm a huge fan of which I did a series of unpackaging two full boxes of them. I couldn't find that goddamn sting holographic, which there apparently is one. Oh, I have several uh, son of a bitch. You are, we're going to talk after this. It's like, how many Blitzkrieg cards do you want? No, you know, how many, I own zero how, of those, sir. How many Brett Ryan Goslin full sets series twos do you want to hook me up with a sting card? Um, we'll definitely talk. Apparently that stain card was not difficult to find, but I've never seen one in my entire fucking life. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, AG and I do a card set. I forget if we did two card sets before he mentioned me to Randy uh, over at Limitless. And then um, obviously I got in touch with Randy Carver who runs Limitless and he's like, I'd like to do a card set. And, and we were just kind of off to the races from there. And Fast forward to today, we've done four sets together. The fourth set hasn't come out yet. Uh, we've done four full sets. Uh, we did a nine card special moment set. And um, now I work for him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if for, for years, like, all right, so you asked about like the limitless cards blowing up, right? To me, I didn't reap the benefits of the secondary market. Because I don't charge an exorbitant amount of money to get these things made, mm-hmm. uh, which I should probably reconsider, but, <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I won't because, um, yeah, I run a wrestling promotion. Yeah, I make merch. Yeah, I am a wrestler. And I think that's what gets me to want to do stuff the way I do it, because it's like I want to create inexpensive stuff that will make the boys money. Mm-hmm. And so far it has been good Um, with limitless. The, like the first real rush of, of coolness that I got from doing those cards, besides the fact that, that I was actually doing something creative and somebody was buying it. um, But it was Randy would buy like 10, 15, 20 sets of each. And I'm just like, and this guy has no idea that he is keeping my wrestling company uh, in business because he's buying my cards. And then I look out on the secondary market, fast forward, because that would have been like 2018, I think was the first set. First set 2018, yeah. Yeah, and then you see, even I have to question it. You're like, yeah, 2018, that's 2018. exactly what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> collector, collector, collector. 
uh see, see isn't that isn't that so funny like like when like let's say you watch wrestling on tv and you're just like oh man i love i don't know Br- Br- bret hart right it's like i love bret hart that might be a bad example he might actually un- he might actually remember all this shit but like if you ask somebody like i don't know let's say matt riddle he smokes a lot of pot let's say you ask matt riddle like hey man do you remember columbia south carolina back in 2000 2000- like, no yeah and you're I, like, I do. You were wearing blue contact lenses. You know, like it's crazy. I, I, I'm, the, I'm the equivalent of that kind of guy then when it comes to the checklist information. It's like, thanks. Thanks for that, doing that. So Yeah. So for me, for me, it's just like, yeah, yeah, kid. I remember South Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it was 2018. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, we did we did our first set together. And uh, back then, uh, the amount of money that was spent to buy the cards. I was charging five dollars for a sheet of nine cards. If the set had, you know, just just from my little brain, if the set had sixty cards in it, and let's say it was ten instead of nine, you're talking a full set for fucking thirty bucks. For thirty bucks, <laughs> right? So, um, you know, that's how much I made per set. And then you fast forward now. Uh, recently, I asked Randy, I said, hey, uh, I have a bunch of these limitless cards just kind of sitting around the office that I don't care for. Would you be okay if I sold them on a secondary market? And he said, sure, no, absolutely, go ahead. And so I did. And it was just like, I made more on one card than I did selling him the entire set. So <laughs> It's amazing what uh, how those have caught on. I mean, it's just amazing you know, we first talked about like some of the early indie stuff that started taking off was PWG. Uh, the yes. bowl of sets really started going off and that was, uh, you know, uh, very popular for a while. And it's still popular when you find certain ones. Yeah, and I was going to say, I have a few of those myself. Yeah. And then, uh, then we have like GCW started taking off with their card sets like that, you know, with uh, Joey Janela, Spring Breaks and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and then Limitless became like, no, no, no. You think those are big cards? there's a lot of big names that are current big names now in that limitless sets like that. And that's become like, again, it's the Holy grail for some guys out there now who now they're on AEW, whatever. And they're like, Oh, what's their rookie card? Well, it's that upper deck from 2021. No, no, no. It's gotta be a limitless from 2018. And that's kind of where we as a website uh, have to archive that information. So then people can determine like, well, well, their first appearance is on this card set from 2018, not 2021 or 2022. It's I know a, there was a, I know there was an argument that wound up landing in my my goddamn DMs on Twitter about which MJF card was the goddamn rookie card was it Limitless was it you know those two other ones and I was just like Jesus Christ yep. <laughs> like thank you so much for being great collectors but Jesus Christ <laughs> <laughs> but, you got, like, but you but you gotta there's gotta be a level of like yeah I made that yeah a little bit. <laughs> Let me drink my 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 sugar free root beer. <laughs> but it, it's incredible where that market's come from. I mean, uh, the you know the mainstream ones of like you know your WWE and AEW cards are it, they're still you know commanding some big dollars, uh, yeah. especially with Prism now with uh, uh, Panini and their Prism release came and out. Those goddamn and, things are so expensive just to buy in the packs. I, I know uh, that's just kind of how it is. I mean, you know, vintage is still vintage. Yeah, nothing's going to take away from an 85 Hogan, an 82 Hogan, 82 Andre. Nothing's going to take away from stuff like that. That's just going to be, that is what it is. And it's going to be maintained value for, for, for decades and forever. Um, yeah. But this new stuff coming out, it's like, you know, how much longer do you think an MJF limitless card is going to hold, you know, top dollar? I mean, well, who knows? Well, here's the thing. Um, you know, a lot of people will make the, um, the Beanie Baby argument or the pop figure argument where it was just like, uh, these two things were super duper popular and then suddenly they were just worthless. Um, my dad told me when I was a kid because my dad was a collector himself. He, he, didn't, he didn't outright go, you know, we get one of these and then another one and then one just in case, you know, like he wasn't, he wasn't like that, but he had a lot of things, you know. And back in the early 90s, you know, those baseball cards exploded. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the baseball cards from the 60s exploded because it's a 30-year nostalgia window. Yeah. You know what I mean? So 
after 30 years, those 60s cards that, that people just pulled out of their packs, put them in the spokes of their bike and drove around on them are now suddenly netting all this money. So people start collecting cards then thinking that one day these are going to be valuable. Well, tough shit because they fucking produced so much bullshit that, uh, well, the that, 90s, yeah, know, that, that, that's the junk wax era. <laughs> exactly. Like I just, I went to, was at a flea market the other day and, uh, I picked up a, a complete box of 89 Donruss and I'm pretty sure I overpaid because uh, you can kind of throw all of those away. There's a Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card in that set. I'm pretty sure it's worth eight cents. So <laughs> if anybody's looking for a box of Donruss, um, you know, hit me up. But uh, my dad would tell me, he was just like, <clears throat> when it comes to collecting anything, collect for yourself. Yep. And remember, nothing is worth a shit unless somebody wants it. It's always the, the phrase has always been like, it's only worth what someone's willing to pay for it. Correct. And if nobody like that, the gentleman who spent $3,000 on the MJF card. Hey, man, I, I did some reading because a lot of people were tagging me and stuff. And I, I, I love interacting with people. Um because you know some people will ask they will ask the star trek questions is what i call them like you know the people who go up to shatner who you know shatner shatner's been out of it for 10 years and people go do you remember in episode two season one when you were had the the purple tricorder and uh, you know like those <laughs> kinds of which oh, yeah. i'm so i i was that guy for a long time but but i but i get the annoyance uh, especially I mean, when they, getting... they, they capture that entire thing in the galaxy quest man it's such a great little moment there where it's the yep, stupid yep, yep. dumb no, questions you know you... <laughs> it's when that when that mjf went for three thousand dollars i got tagged in this really really long thread where basically people were waving their bricks around and i was just like oh man i remember being this way i mean i got the one two three kid has grow up on the wall and package like i remember when i was just yeah. like i got earthbound on super nintendo sitting in the shelf like i I remember, you know, being that guy, go, look what I've got, you know, but like, <clears throat> it was just so funny how, how wild it got. And it's like, all right, here's a guy who has 300, 300, Jesus Christ, has $3,000 to spend on one card because he wants the goddamn card. And he knows that he'll be able to flip it for more now that he's created this market. Yep. And, so, uh, and it's all that it's on your, we're prospecting, we're speculating on, on values of cards, for, you know, well, I'm going to get it on early because 3000 could be a bargain because in 10 years, this guy could be legendary and all of a sudden 3000 was like nothing. I can sell it for 30,000, you know, right. uh, you, you don't know. I mean, that's what everybody's always buying this stuff up for. They're just trying to gobble things up thinking it's the next big thing. I for, mean, for, uh, for me, for me, it's just like, oh man, going through old sets, look at all the people that have been canceled. These cards <laughs> don't mean anything. Um, <laughs> no, no. So, so um, somebody so remember i said that i asked randy for permission to sell cards or whatever yep. and i made quite a bit of money in a real quick amount of time and i was doing it fair market price because everybody like every, all those cards were apparently going at like i don't know 25 to 30 a piece on average and mm -hmm. i was just like i let anybody who reached out to me i was literally like look make me an offer um you know i if you off just below or just above sure 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 but like you know i'm not gonna fuck with the market yeah. um you know it was i felt i felt it was the right thing to do some people were like eight cents and i'm just like okay <laughs> and then you're gonna go and fucking turn around and try and sell it for a shitload more money i know you um but there's a certain collectors out there that but this because they know that these are very limited uh no pun intended um nope. But, uh, and they're collector collectors. They're not looking to buy, to resell. They're looking to collect for themselves. That's to what keep. And that's the difference. Those, are the, about those are the cards. people I'll, those are the people, if I know that you're that kind of a collector, I mean, really no, yeah. no. You know what I mean? Like if yeah. I have a relationship with you, I'd be more than, like, I don't know how many times, um, I don't know how many times I've handed cards to people for free just because. I knew that they were personal collectors and that they weren't going to try and make a shitload of money on it. And even still, I wasn't even thinking like that either. You want to know how oblivious I was to all of this? When I was, um, when I was reconstructing my attic, because I have an apartment and the attic is basically this unfinished room, mm. and, but it's the size of the fucking apartment. So it's like, I got two apartments, really nice. Um, 
And in one of the areas, I was putting up posters and pictures and just all these things that make me happy. Big poster of Barry Windham from 92. Anyway, um, <laughs> on the edging of it, and this is how oblivious I was, on the edging of the walls, stapled into and covered with packaging tape, clear tape so I could see through it, Dan Housen rookie, MJF rookie, <laughs> Slamovich, fucking, I didn't know these things were going to be worth this shit. <laughs> like, somebody literally said, how bad is it? Can you cut it off the wall and send it to me until I can find a more pristine version? I'm like, what the fuck <laughs> is going on? It's crazy, right? It has, the, yeah. the, rest, the wrestling card collectors are like typical wrestling fans. They're kind of rabid uh, you yep. know, and, and it's unlike other sports, any stick and ball type of sport is there's a lot of flipping, buying, selling, there's so much of it, but wrestling fans and especially wrestling car collectors tend to hold on to their stuff. Once they have it, they don't let it go. I've noticed that, uh, at flea markets, I started, um, I slightly on the side, I started picking up like thrift shop hunting. And once again, up in the attic, I built a small, um, video store in one of the little rooms that I have, Dick Buster video. Yeah, get your guys. Um, but I, I, but I, you know, I did that. So I go thrift shopping and I'm just kind of looking for VHS or laser disc, old shit, right? Yeah. Never. I never find wrestling shit out in the wild because nobody's getting rid of that shit. No, <laughs> they know? hold on to it. They so, hoard it. You know, it, 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 and I'm it, just it, trying to get stuff for my gimmick table. Yeah, you know, it, like, it means it means something to, to fans out there who actually, I mean, there's all kinds of different fans. I mean, I've done a segment where I talk to wrestling fans who collect but don't collect trading cards for some reason. Um, like that's like foreign to them. They collect replica right. belts and action figures and t-shirts and all that kind of shit, but they don't collect cards. So it's really weird. But it doesn't matter what they collect, they seem to tend to hold on to it. They don't really let it go, as you you know said that you know you can't find VHS tapes, you can't find DVDs. I mean, you can't find some of this stuff because they, they hold on to it for. And it's not like it doesn't exist or it's limited. They just don't want to get rid of it. Period. Yeah, there could be a million of them, but they're currently owned. By a million people. <laughs> By a million people. So it's just, so... Uh, you can't find them in uh, any, any discount boxes for some reason. So uh, yeah. it, it's crazy, but you guys have uh, created something uh, really kind of cool and special. The Limitless one is kind of just speaks for itself now. I mean, it's become like this iconic set that I, I think is just going to continue to keep growing as people are more and more collectors are being turned on to it and finding like, oh, my, I got to get that Dan Howe. I got to get this. I got to get that. It becomes uh, difficult. They're going to realize that uh, this has become like a modern day, the indie version of the 82 All-Stars almost, where, you know, trying to find uh, the, the Hogan. The yellow cards, right? Yeah. Well, you know, they look more like this. Yes, those. Yeah, yeah. I did. I, I, you know what? I forgot a name on the list. I did a mock of one of those cards for Sidney Bacabell. Yes, I actually saw that. I think you tweeted that too, I think, right? And yep. Yep. Um, it, it, it's incredible. And then a lot of your card design, well, not a lot, a good number of them, you do pay homage to a lot of the older card sets. You've done, yep. you've done the Impel, you've done Classic All-Stars. I think you guys even did, did you guys do like 87 tops or something like that? We did 87 tops. I believe it's 87 tops because yeah. I'm not a baseball card yeah. guy. Once again, box well, of time, no, Russ. No, but it's, it's 87 tops WWF. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I don't know about that. I, I might have. Um, I know I did 90, 91, the blue and reds. Yes. Uh, I did, but I did that in purple and green for Vern Vicalo. Um, but essentially, yeah, it started off with um, I either do a very basic design uh, or I pay homage to cards that I grew up with, like uh, Anthony's cards uh, were the Impels, and and like I said, Vern's were the uh, were the blue and reds. Uh, the nine, I think the ninety ones. I think it's ninety one. Um, Brian Malonis, I did. It was the very popular uh, MLB design, where it's like the wood grain of the bat. Sure. Yeah, and yeah, all that. Um, even even Brett Ryan Goslin's cards. Those are uh, those are throwback to uh, NHL cards of the of the past. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, when I, when I was first starting out, I would ask, um, I would ask wrestlers, I said, show me an example of the card that you kind of want it to look like, and I can mimic it. Um, oh, 
Perry Von Vicious. Perry Von Vicious, I did the 87 tops design with, I think. Gotcha. That's with the, it looks like a, like a comic book talk bubble with spikes. Uh, that's 85, that's 80, 85 one. This is an example of like that one right here. Yes, yes, yes. I've done those. I've that's done 85 I've tops. Mimicked down. The 87 is the red, like red, it's like red, white, and blue. Oh, yes, yes. With the, with the fact, stars on the uh, side. Yes, I did do that for, um, here's a look this is a good one i did that for tough guy incorporated bob evans and tim hughes never released them but i did the design for them why is they that? never came out oh. we we were talking about it at one point because bob's a friend and um we were talking about it at one point and i went through i went through and made them up and then both of us both sides just completely fucked off on it and they just kind of <laughs> they just kind of landed in my archive but i have the template someplace in case anybody ever wants to mimic those again oh so, so it's never been printed that we have never printed those yeah. so I, I mean now that i've said this bob might go hey wait a minute come wait on a let's second. get some cards out here three grand for a popular. card where the hell's my cut <laughs> yeah where's my yeah, where's my card where's my know? three thousand dollar card yeah. uh now tell me about the, the, the cards that are subject to change set. Is, is it yeah. a completed set? Is it, is it, has it been released? Cause I'm, I'm not, I am not the indie card guy. I would like to have Caleb on or my, or my guy Chuckster on. They're like way into that kind of stuff, but has that card set been released? Is it coming out in no, waves? Not yet. It? It hasn't come not out yet. yet. Um, we were, um, we were planning on a late spring, early summer release. Um, but I'm just too goddamn busy. <laughs> which is because a good thing right <laughs> it, it, it it is um but you know for the last two years i've been living off of wrestling so during the pandemic when there were no shows um i learned how to 3d print and started making action figures i saw then, that you got your website actually has the action figure group really cool looking yeah yeah very much based on the hasbro line that i grew up with anthony green went to japan with a bunch of little anthony's in his bag uh he got his ripe era jacket that makes me happy uh, so yeah and um i don't know do you know fig heel he's the he's a youtube channel he's got a huge figure collection anyway uh he put us in his book his checklist book of wrestling figures oh nice really, really honored by that and then uh we're doing an exclusive release figure of him. Um, it was supposed to coincide with the book, but once again, things got a little delayed. Sure. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, you know, the toys, the cards, uh, running a promotion, being a wrestler, coming back from, uh, from neck fusion. So I was retired for two years. So it's just like, I'm on my last run. I'm running a promotion. I work as a ring announcer and a commentator for like half a dozen other promotions. Uh, now I work for Limitless in some form or fashion. Uh, I got a real job recently. <laughs> so there's a lot of, a lot of irons in the fire. I'm the eight by 10 guy for a lot of guys too. Anything that could be printed because I work at a print shop. Oh. So yeah. Yeah. So that wasn't. No wonder why it took me a year to get you on. I'm just too fucking busy. <laughs> uh, it's, I, I say that to like my friend. My friends are the ones that are funny. People like you who are just like, hey, man, I don't know you from Adam. I'd like to interview you or talk to you or something. I'm like me. I, was like, I always feel bad because I feel like I'm, you know, I'm letting this new friend down. And then my <laughs> real friends are just like, you're a fucking asshole for not prioritizing me. And I'm like, fuck my real friends. Let me go hang out with strangers. <laughs> that's, that's how they're, that's why they're a real friend. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Assholes. <laughs> <laughs> uh do you have a sc potential scheduled release date for your card site looking for a fall release maybe i mean it might have to be at this point because um you know just got done doing blitz creek pro which by the way that 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 took off like like out of nowhere like all of a sudden it became a talk this last couple of weeks like where the fuck did you find this and how come i can't get any yeah it was well here's the thing um as far as I understand it, I say that like I don't fucking know. Like he, we just went through this, him and I. Um, I believe we initially did fifteen sets. Of that's what we have. That's what we have on the checklist right now for the information. And then another five got printed. Okay, so there is another five. So twenty. So there, and they sold out fucking immediately too. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a total of twenty out in the wild. Which is crazy yeah, uh, because you go to the website, you can still yeah. order a pack. Well, I'm I'm sure if enough packs get, you know, I'm sure if the packs get ordered, he'll reach out 
to, to buy more. You know okay. what I mean? Like so that's the, the so, thing. With, so the print run isn't officially done and over with. It's just going to, you print on, on demand. Yes, kind of. Kind some of. people now, now that the shit's blowing up the way it is, some people like, um, Jeremy from Blitzkrieg and I, he was already talking to me about doing series two, and I'm just like, series two, <laughs> like people still want one. They're like, what, what are you doing? You know? Um, and I'm not gonna lie to you. This is this is something that you can take into account. I don't know if you really want to put this on your checklists because it's not necessarily circulated or out in the wild, but. I obviously print up a handful of sets for my own personal like portfolio. Sure. So, so if there are 20 sets that are being circulated and I think I have five full sets of Blitzkrieg one that I just keep for myself. And once again, I won't sell them anytime soon, but that's not to say that sometime in the next couple of years, they wind up out in the, out in the wild. So well, I don't know what, how what, what I believe in, in for the checklist site, what I believe in, if they exist, we just document it. So if we know that, Hey, there's 25 of those in existence. 20, 20 are right now in the public. Five are being held by the by the you know the creators like that. And that's just what it is. They exist. Not, then they I exist. would say then I would say go ahead and jot down 25 <laughs> for Blitzkrieg Series One. Um, and but it's that's still, not to it's say still that, extremely limited. It's still. Well, here's the thing. You know, all right. Let's say hypothet hypothetically, right? Let's say hypothetically there are only 25 people who want a complete set. They're being sold in packs. There's no guarantee that those 25 people are going to be able to agree uh, to complete each other's sets. I have no idea like how many people there are that are completionist collectors with these things. Some people just want some. Yeah, some people you know, are only, they're, they're, they're just a, a player collector. They only want the one players like that. You know, for me, right. I, I, I player collect Dexter Loomis and Kurt Angle. <laughs> okay. You know, yeah. something, something classic something modern just just for fun you know that's all I, I I'm, I'm a big fan of getting cards of people that i have booked previously so like um you know anthony green getting his one wwe card was awesome and i pulled it uh i started doing this video series on my my youtube channel i pulled it because it was the whole point of the whole thing i bought the 70 dollar fucking uk pack of cards just to pull ag I pulled it and I jokingly say on the video, I wonder if my superstar friend, if I could mail this to him, he'd sign it and send it back. <laughs> he got fired the same day I released that video. Oh, you're the reason he got fired. Yeah, it was me. It was me. Yeah. And I'm the reason. And I, hey, one night in 19, whatever year it was, I went to the, I went to FYE or Suncoast video and I bought the Sega CD game, make my video in excess. Fucking Hutchinson was dead the next day. It was me. <laughs> It had to be me. I've cursed everybody. Just stop, so him, just stop consuming things, would you? <laughs> yeah, just, that's why I stopped collecting. It's uh, I actually did an hour long podcast about how collection, collecting, and uh, stuff of that nature really fucked me up uh, in my adult years. But uh, <laughs> and I, I mean that, I mean that genuinely. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. As far as as far as player collect, I you know AG would be one uh, at least WWE cards. Yeah. I'm not super killer about the indie cards, well because I make them. You know, like yeah. Okay. Why is that then? Why why do you not do you not like other people? I know Chris Smith prints out a lot of stuff. He did all the Impact stuff. He's done a lot of independent stuff. I think he's done he's done GCW stuff. He prints the GCW stuff. Um, uh, he's here's, done a lot here's, of stuff. I'll explain why. Um, and I, this is the Cliff Notes version of it. Um, I jokingly just said that my collecting mania was the cause of a lot of fucking mental problems for myself. Um, the, long of it, the long and short of it goes like this. When I was a kid, there was a video rental store that had wrestling videotapes. And I would go in there every week and I, I can close my eyes and I can fucking see it. I walk in the door, I take the left, I go all the way down and in this little cubby area, it was hunting videos and wrestling and i i remember i would sit there every week and i'd pick up my parents would let me pick out a couple and my dad had two vcrs so we could copy them and we just kept renting them until you know and i remember looking at that pile going one day i'm gonna have all this and then the day came that i did and i wasn't fucking happy oh. um then the 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 time the moment i knew something was wrong i was actively going to therapy for other things saved my life by the way so that's my quick my quick little to do 
if more wrestlers went to therapy, there'd be far less dead wrestlers. I'll just put it that. I think Raven said that. Public service announcement for all you wrestlers. Yes. If you feel if you if you if you get that silent scream that Roddy Piper was talking about, seek help. Um, so one day I walked into a place that sold pop figures, and they had the Married with Children pops. I love Married with Children. I loved Al. So I, in my mind, I wanted Al, and I wanted the limited Al and his poke high shit. And I'm like, okay, cool. But they also had Bud, Kelly, and Peg on the shelf. Fifteen bucks a piece. These things. I said, fuck it, and I bought the whole set. And I come home. And I put it up on the wall and I remember looking at it for like a really odd long time. And I just went, I just wanted Al. Why the fuck did I buy the other three? Because you have a collector's mentality. That's why it's, it's, a, it's equivalent to being an, an, an addict, whether it be gambling or drugs or whatever. It really is. And I, and I sympathize with that because that's why I stopped collecting in the mid 2000s after many, many, many well, decades for me. Uh, because yeah. it just became too much. Like I had to have everything and I couldn't complete things. If I couldn't complete it, I didn't want it. So I just, right. I quit. Now, when I got back into relaunching the website, redoing checklists again, bringing things current, I said, you know what? I, I'm trying to support, you know, local indie people, buy a couple sets here, support artists who put out their, you know, their cool little wrestling art card sets, uh, which I love dearly. I, I try to support, but I'm like, I can't, I just can't do it because the thrill of the chase is always still going to be there. But once I have it, that thrill is gone. And it's just, right. uh, it's not going to move on to the next thing. So I'm like, you know what? I'm player collecting. I have something that can sort of just really manage, maintain. I'm having a lot of fun doing it right now. I'm having the most fun collecting that I've ever had uh, in years. So I, I totally understand where you're coming from with that. Yeah, only don't collect for, don't speculate. In my, this is my life. Everybody else can do whatever they want with their money. If they don't have any fucking mental imbalance about it, you can do whatever you want. But for me. It's, I gotta be able, if I'm going to collect something, it has to be something that I care about or something that I'm going to keep. I'm not buying to speculate, like doing the, doing the flea market trips and, you know, picking up something for a dollar to flip for five on my merch table or whatever it'll, you know, cause I've got relationships with local shops and whatnot. Like that, that's one thing. Like I'm not going, I, I don't have, uh, you know, a million item inventory of things to kind of go because I'm speculating they're going to make me money. Um, I collect because I, I collect things that make me happy that I, that I want to collect. Um, there was a moment there where those AEW figures, like when they were fresh and new and hot and everybody wanted them, you know, you get, I got the itch a little bit and, but I only picked up the ones I wanted. Like right now I only want Eddie Kingston or I only want Jericho from Mexico or, you know, though the, the the new punk, you know, shit like that. Like, but I'm not I'm not gonna be like, I don't need every variation of Nia Jax. I mean uh Nyla Rose, uh I don't need all the Cody's, you know, the one in five thousand I don't need that. It doesn't matter to me. Um but so it, yeah it, I, it takes some time to get that mentality though it does because once you've collected you try to go from like okay I'm going to I'm going to limit myself. I'm going to curb how I collect. It can be hard. It, it's it's amazing because remember I said the whole thing about we rent videos and then we VCR to VCR record them until I had them all and then the advent of putting VHS to DVD came along and so I spent a lot of time doing that and then I found out you could take the DVDs and pull them onto a hard drive and then you could play them like a DVD on this thing called the WD TV so I started ripping DVDs into hard drives but then I was still downloading files to show burning them onto DVDs and ripping them into hard drives I'm like <laughs> fuck that I can just fucking download the files and then I could literally have everything and I wanted to die <laughs> it was just it, there was just it was the equivalent of eating too much there was too much to consume so anyway that's my long uh roundabout way of saying here's why I don't collect indie cards um because I just don't uh, I don't have the time <laughs> I don't know how long I'm going to be alive I, I don't have the time <laughs> you know, there's only so much I can do. I'm busy doing a hundred other fucking things. Yeah, I, 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 I totally get that. I totally do. Um, do you, uh, your, your release coming out later this year, hopefully come out later this year. Can you give us any little tidbits about like how big is the set going to be? Yeah. You know, is there any um, special coming in or it's a straight card set, like any uh, special chase cards or. No, just to give, all right. So this, I got, I personally have, uh, I personally have two sets coming in. I have the new Proven Ground set for my promotion coming out. Uh, and then we've got 
card subject to change. Um, card subject to change, we have, I think I can pull it up and give you a pretty rough estimate of how many cards are in this set, because I've got all the files here. Um, it's the best part about doing this, I can do it at home. I love that. It's nice, if, but then here's the problem is like my, my, I move because of the attic being on, um, you can't, you can't fucking control the, the, the weather up there. So it's a million degrees in the summer and freezing in the winter. So I moved my office into my bedroom, which is great when you're trying to sleep. Uh, here we go. Projects, cards, subject to change keepers. Okay. <laughs> Um, I think this is a rough number, but it's like 64 to 66 regular cards. And then there are going to be some like special cards being circulated in there. Like I believe we're doing an all purple Matt Taven limited card. Um, we're doing autographed cards for a handful of the talents. And it's like, it varies from like one out of 50, one out of 30, one out of 25, et cetera. And I can tell you right off the bat, um, some of the people included in that, uh, Andy Brown, I believe is one, uh, Vincent from Ring of Honor, um, Rat Daddy from Australia, which would be a really hard card to get autographed but he did like one night in limitless and I, you know, I rushed out the cards to make sure that we had them to sign. So, That's you know, amazing. if you're not, if, if you're, if you're a U.S. collector, you know, you're probably never going to see rat daddy live without having to like send the card international. So we figured we'd put some of those into chase. Which is amazing about uh, trading cards though, for the guys who go out and collect the complete sets, they find mm -hmm. people like they've never seen before because of, we live in a world now where the world's so damn small because of the internet. Uh, yeah. I can go online and see matches of that person right now. If I want to, I could find just about anything I want. And all of a sudden now they got a new fan. They never even knew they had a the guy's in Australia, but I got a guy in New Hampshire who's now like this huge fan because he saw him on a trading card and then went and looked him up. Yeah. Yeah. So like that, that, that's a big thing. And not only that, but on the card subject to change cards, if I'm not mistaken, because we haven't finalized the backs of them yet, but I believe all of their social media stuff is going to be included. So oh, if excellent. you if you pick up a card subject to change pack and you're like flipping through and you're like, hey, that's an interesting looking guy. Oh, there he is on Instagram, you know? And all of a sudden that guy's got a new fan. This set um, was created by Anthony Green. It was his idea when he came out of the WWE. He's like, well, I'm thinking about doing an indie card set. And I'm like, okay. You know, like that's that's all that's the discussion. All right, yeah, whatever you want to do. And it turned into this really neat thing where not only do and I've got a list of everybody that's in the set in front of me now that I'm thinking about it, but um not only do you get a trading card of everybody and there's like up and comers, there's people that have never had cards, um, and there's people like you know, for instance, Charlie Haas. Mm -hmm. who's you know wwe you know uh, legendary wrestler yeah i've had him on as a guest of the show yeah and he's genuinely a really nice guy Super and, nice guy and it's just like we got guys like that in the set uh because ag you know he's made a lot of friends and yeah. made a lot of connections uh in his time um one person that we tried to get and we couldn't get was uh killer cross yeah we tried to get him in Scarlet and he respectfully declined because I believe at the time, now I don't know if it's fallen through because we haven't seen him on TV anywhere yet, but I believe at the time the rumor was that he was going to sign with AEW or yeah. something like that. And obviously that wouldn't have done us any good. Uh, no, no. Dan Danhausen was originally scheduled to be in series four of Limitless and he ended up getting pulled. So... I don't know if there was a, a cease and desist on that or if it was just, uh, yeah, we might as well pull. You mentioned you know. packs, by the way, though. Uh, mm -hmm. These are going to be available as packs. You can't buy a full complete set. That was, all right. So as far as like the decisions about cards subject to change, 
most of those decisions came from Anthony Green. And the thrill, uh, as you know, is always in the hunt. Of course. And I feel, uh, Anthony and I both feel like, and this, I'm just going to say it. This could be a business asshole thing to say. <laughs> but there is obviously more money to be made in packs than anything else. Of course. You know, because you're not, you know, if, if there's 40 cards in a set and there's 10 cards in each pack, there's no guarantee that you're going to pick up four packs and have a full set. Correct. You know what I mean? So, and, and uh, so it, that, that, that leads me to a question someone had submitted to me to ask you, which yeah. was, uh, you know, do you correlate the packs or do the promotions do that? You know, what's that process like? In when it comes to cards subject to change, I believe because Anthony is the world traveler, uh, I believe if I'm not mistaken that I'm going to be left in charge of putting all that stuff together um, and then having those cards available on my store site, uh, as well as he's going to get a bunch of packs to have with him to sell at shows he's at. And then I'm sure I'll have them on the table at the Proving Ground shows here in, uh, in Massachusetts. But, you know, we obviously knew uh, as soon as this thing started hitting, because once we started making announcements, it started blowing up already. Um, yeah, we knew right, we... like right away, like as soon as I got saw a tag for wrestling cards and I saw it, like I was, okay, following them. Yeah, yeah, we were the, like, he's like, uh, do you care if I open up a Twitter for your company? And I'm like, no, nah, man, go right ahead. I wake up the next morning and the shit's blown up and I'm just like, thank you. Now let me start sharing my personal show shit on this one. You know, <laughs> um, you know got to make it. Well, that's, well, that's the thing. Like I, somebody said to me, they were like, Hey, I've got such and such a card. And Oh, it was Brett. So I just did the, 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 the second series for BDRG, who's, you know, an amazing talent. If you've never seen him work, um, works for Limitless as well. Um, but Brett, Brett, we did, Brett, we did a series one with him a couple years ago. And, um, I don't know how quickly they sold. You know, I don't know if they either sold quickly and I never heard anything about it. Yeah, or, but the, mar the market was very different two, two years ago. Well, not only that, not only that, but he was a very local wrestler and he wasn't, he wasn't a promotion like Limitless, you know? And, uh, so I don't know if he sat on those cards for a while, but he only ever ordered like uh, five, 10 sets of those. And I never really heard anything from him. Then we started talking about doing a series two. And I said, fuck it. I'm going to post about it on the Twitter. So I posted on the, you know, the card <laughs> subject to change Twitter. Hey, got this new set of cards coming out. And suddenly I'm getting hate mail <laughs> about that particular wrestler doesn't have it doesn't have the ability to message why the fuck don't you just do it i'm just like <laughs> not my job <laughs> you know well first i'm gonna go i'm gonna i'm gonna comment i, I love that you say like an old man they're like uh, i sure did i post it up on the twitter <laughs> i posted it is there is, i posted it up on, on the is twitter there a twitter in this <laughs> you know like I don't, that old thing the twitter you know that thing ever ever picked up a remote and went is this a phone is this a you phone? know so yeah Kind of. It kind of is. If you, you can use your phone to kind of do everything you want. I can use it in remote, anything I want. I'm a diabetic with a titanium neck. I can act old. It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, Twitter. You can tell, but here's the thing. You can tell I'm a Facebook guy because yeah. I, I didn't know how to, I didn't give a sh two shits about Twitter. Needless to say, it's the one platform you need to be on to fucking get noticed. So. It really kind of, when it comes to trading cards and wrestling cards, it seems to be the case. I just talked to someone the other day from Australia. Uh, that had me on as a guest for their show to talk about wrestling cards because they're yeah. going to be at the national as well. And, and he said, yeah, we've, we found and discovered that the wrestling trading card market seems to gravitate towards Twitter more than any other social media platform. As far as engaging, yeah. discussing, trading, buying, so all that stuff happens on Twitter. It seems more than any place else. And, and you know, you don't, you don't need so many characters to go fuck you, buddy. You know, like, that. that's why Twitter's big, you know? Uh, but you mentioned your Facebook page like that, but, in, uh, the activity on your Facebook page for cards subject to change doesn't it's seem to be minimal. a whole lot. Well, that's the thing. And, and, and um, that, that blows my mind considering that there's other, there's other groups of, of card collecting groups like that, that seem to have so much more activity going on there. I, I, is it just something that you don't have enough time to go and post all the stuff on your site or. I, you know, what it really comes down to is, is I don't, 
it doesn't seem to move the needle for the business. Like no. there was a time, there was a time, and it, this was before everything blew up, but there was a time where I would post sample pictures of all the stuff that I was doing. And it was a nice little archive to have, but I wasn't really posting on it because nobody was really following it or anything. And even now people aren't really following it or anything, but the Twitter, the Twitter's getting all the activity. Like there's a part of me that's just like, I'm just going to close the Facebook and, and keep the Twitter going. Um, yeah, but if you want to you use Facebook as an archive for showing it, because you, you mark proof across everything as well. So I got to kind of keep it. I totally understand that, but I might have to hit you up for non-proof ones for checklists. But um, uh, it was- uh, uh, you, you printing can, you, a book? <laughs> no, I, I, I link uh, the checklist. If you go to our site, I try to link every card name links to an actual image so someone can actually see what it looks like. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, so it also helps the grading companies, you know, hey, that is it's exactly what it is. Okay, it's legit. Um, but you can use Twitter because it's limited, as, as you said. You can use it yeah. to say, hey, here's a sample of our stuff to see more of it, go to our Facebook page. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a series of cards that cannot properly fucking be graded. So they'll all be like off center in poor surface condition. <laughs> and some of the, like the edges, the edges will be intentionally whitened so they won't know if it's part of the, th the fucking thing or not. Here, here you go, folks. It's going to come out. Limitless Series 5, the fucked up edition. With limits. <laughs> with limits. With, fucking with limits. Outside the borders. Outside um, the borders. Fucking. Yeah, but, I, like, but that blew my mind, too. Like you, you said earlier, like there's got to be a part of you that's like, man, this is super fucking cool. And it really is. I am not jaded. I am not um, above feeling the, the 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 goosebumps and the wonderful feeling of joy knowing that not only do people enjoy this thing that i created half naked in my attic with a pair of scissors but they we don't need, we don't need that image but thank you it's okay it's okay <laughs> i'm giving it to you for free oh thanks yeah like it's it's kind of like a checklist card like you don't fucking want it but it, all right i guess not, we so, have the not something i was willing to pay for to begin with but go ahead there you go <laughs> i know that's why i'm screaming fat bald guy anyway um <laughs> No, like it's not lost on me that this 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 little thing that I was just fucking around with um, suddenly became a thing, and um, I love the fact that I went on eBay not long ago, and once again I saw that card sell for three thousand dollars, and then I saw other cards that I had created sell for a hundred, four hundred, thirty, even, yeah. you know, and. Um, and the one that really blew my mind was somebody got my card graded. Yeah. And I'm just like, how the fuck do they even know? Like, I for, for whatever reason, I thought grading services like actually had to have a physical version of the card to compare it to. And I'm just like, how the no. fuck do they have them? But that's not how that works. No. Nope. Um, but no, I saw it's it's the same thing as having my action figures printed in a, in a checklist book or my first year is a, uh, my first year as a touring musician, I got to play all the fucking buildings I wanted to play right away. Um, you know, or as a wrestler, I got to wrestle at Fenway park in Boston twice. Um, I get to run these shows with some incredible talent that I would have never had access to, um with my previous project because my previous project had zero fucking respect because everybody thought we were just backyarders in a ring and that's exactly what we were um despite the, any level of training we've all gotten and it's just like time has been good to me the universe has been good to me and the card business the toy business the wrestling business as a whole kept me living indoors for the last two years i only recently just got a job because i walked into the print shop that i got my posters and cards made at and they said hey you want a job yeah okay okay you know so i get to work you know between 20 and 40 hours a week and you know how you ever seen those those people who are just like they're wrestlers or musicians and they're like they'll be at the fucking cashier job and some hot girl will walk up. And the first thing the guy will do is, you know, this isn't my real job. <laughs> I can finally say that and mean it. <laughs> you know, I make more money on wrestling than I do my day job. So it's like, it, it's, and, and I don't say that to brag. I just say that to be like, I had to fucking hustle to do the things that I do. Like, 
it's not easy fucking designing trading cards from scratch, even if I'm mimicking somebody from the past or, you know, and you're dealing with all these different customers and then you're dealing with international. So I got a t-shirt site too, bigdaddytees.net. Um, you know, like I'm constantly fucking busy with shit because I want to live indoors. You sound a lot <laughs> like, sounds like a lot like me. I, I have a lot of different eggs and different baskets because I just got to find ways to always make sure that there's income coming in here, take care of my family. And like you said, yep. live indoors, man. It's, it's too hot to live outside in, in Arizona. <laughs> oh my God, Arizona. Somebody um, said to me once, I worked for a company that sold uh, pet wholesale products, right? And every year it was either Arizona or Vegas where there would be like this big pet merchandise expo thing, you know? It's as weird as a wrestling convention. And uh, to, to normies. Anyway, um, but they asked me one year, would you like to go, you know, how does uh, Nevada in August sound? And I said, <laughs> it sounds like walking into the fucking sun. That's yeah. what it sounds like. Yeah, right um, now it's, it's 6.32 p.m. my time right now. And it's still 106 yeah. degrees outside. Fuck that. Like, and, Jesus and, Christ. And, I mean, uh, I, last night in the, in the three years we've lived in this house, uh, last night, my, my AC went out and it was still 105 at, uh, at midnight last night. So but I bet like, you it was a cool heat. No, <laughs> going outside sometimes in the daytime, you walk out and any wind that comes and hits you, it's like opening the oven door and it just hits you right in the face. It's constant. So I, yeah, I don't think commit suicide with the oven door, you know, I, I understand that. You're just yeah. living in it. I'm living in it. Yeah. I'm the place yeah. they come to to commit suicide. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's, like, it's either this or living back east in like charlotte's like that and dealing with 100 humidity uh i, don't know I have no like. idea of talking like this for an hour has uh will adversely destroy my business but we'll, no but, no but, I, I think it's uh it's it's very insightful actually because people are always interested in hearing about the process of and then that's let's let's end it with that by the way you know what what is a, a normal process of doing a card set go for you from start to finish from conception you know, uh, uh, to, to delivery. All right. Um, I will give you both methods. Okay. So there was the starting out method, which, uh, I call the yellowing era. Um, cause a lot of the limitless card, card have, have noted the yellowing. Yep. Um, so here's how I did this. I, I'm, I'm not really giving away secrets at this point because, uh, if you want to do what I did, you absolutely can. It's very easy, and I wouldn't gatekeep anyone from the secrets. Well, I mean, there's, is it? We live. In, I said we live in a world now where it's available. 2018 is considerably different than 2022 when there's actually online sources where I can go and print just about anything I want. Correct. Um, you know, I have a I have a little bin of stickers that sits on my my merch table of horror movie posters. Mm. Mm. <laughs> hey, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I had con I had contemplated doing a card set that I did not advertise and only sold at shows, but it's like you said, someone will get it, it'll go back, see yep. these, yeah. whatever. So I didn't, but uh, the stickers, yeah, it's fine. Anyway, um, so the original process uh, went like this. Um, it was glossy sticker paper, which as I found out, no matter what brand of glossy sticker paper you get, if that shit is even kissed by the sun, it is turning yellow. Uh, could be over time, could be fucking immediately. I don't know how many times <laughs> I've opened packages of the shit and it's already there. Um, the good news, is, and now, now here's the thing. At the time, I was like, if I print color over it, nobody will notice. I was a little, I was just like, I'm really small. It's not, you know, like I'm not really a business business. I'm just doing this for a couple of people and blah, blah, blah. What color do you want the back of your cards? <laughs> White, you know. Um, I think yellow would look good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yellow. It's like that episode of The Simpsons. Lisa walks into the print shop and she's like, all right, I'd like 50 on Goldenrod and uh, 50 <laughs> on Dandelion. And she names off all these colors. At the end, the guy just goes, 100 yellow. <laughs> right. that's, yeah, that was the only that's when you really yell. Um, so the process was you um, for those series one and series two cards because I switched it up by series three, series one and series two, and everything else I did during that time, like AG's first couple of sets of cards, etc. 
was done this way. It was two sheets of glossy sticker paper. You could fit about nine cards a piece on those sheets. And you would apply them to basically a comic book back because it was the right thickness or a magazine back because that was about the size of a, you know, a eight and a half by 11 piece mm -hmm. of paper. And the part, you know, the, you, over time you figure out how to fucking uh, make sure you're lining it up properly because you couldn't just print directly on the goddamn cardboard, which would have been magnificent. And then, um, and then I discovered the yellowing, you know, it's like, fuck, because this is going to happen to everybody's fucking cards. Because almost everybody that I did cards for, I did the Impel 91 backs, which is white with a picture and black text. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, this is going to ruin whatever business that I was going to have. So I switched it up. And what I did was, was I said, uh, fuck this. I, there's got to be a better way uh, that's more cost effective. Because, you know, printer ink is expensive. Of course. I managed, I managed to, to find a printer. I think it's the Canon MX922. They're discontinued now. But I still manage, like, whenever I have, they die after a couple years. So I replace it every time because you can get four sets, full sets of ink for under $20. Oh, wow. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, um, so, you know, uh, that's how I was doing it. And I said, fuck it. I have a relationship with this local print shop in town. So let's work something out with them. And I did, you know, I went there and I said, here's what I'm doing. And they're like, oh, just send us the front and back files and we'll line it up and blah, 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 right? Now, here's where the story gets a little dark. We do this for a couple of years together. And one holiday season, around November of last year, one holiday season, they say, hey, you do so much business with us. Why don't you um, why don't you come on as an employee in January? I said, okay, that'd be great. I'd love to work with you guys. I hadn't had a real day job in a long time at that point. And uh, but by choice, oddly enough, I wanted to take a chance on me. Um, so they gave me this project, which was basically stuffing 3,000 envelopes with a calendar and a letter. And I did that in like a week. And they're like, oh, man, it would have taken us three weeks to do with all the other jobs. Here's X amount of dollars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I go to drop off the, the calendars to them. It's, it, was a, it was a, you know, a husband and wife team that ran the mm -hmm. shop. Um, the husband and I, we went to the post office, dropped off the 3,000 things. Uh, and they had asked me earlier in the day if I, they just moved into a new house. They asked me if I could help them move like a couch and a refrigerator the next morning because the husband threw his back out. I said, absolutely. I'll see you guys tomorrow. This was about 2 p.m. on Wednesday. Um, I messaged over some requests to get some stickers done or whatever, and then I didn't hear anything the next day. And they're usually not like that. So I emailed going, hey, not trying to be a pain in the ass or anything, but, you know, uh, can you give me an update on these cards? don't hear anything. Um, and then I find out they died. Both of them? Both of them. I saw them at two o'clock. They were dead by seven. Wow. And the article that I read suspected drugs because um, they didn't suspect foul play, which, you know, when two people die at the same fucking time and there's no foul play, it's kind of hard not to look at drugs, you know, simultaneous heart attacks is not really a thing. Um, I don't know for sure. And I don't ever want to speak out on it. Um, even if I did, but, uh, they were my friends and we were just about to become business partners. And I, there was a moment where like the most important thing of course was the loss of their lives. The fact that they had a 13 year old daughter uh, that now a lot, doesn't have any of the parents and it's just like, and here I am sitting here going, I feel like such an asshole, even thinking about trading cards and posters. And it sucks because I had a show coming up 
and I needed to get posters done. And it was just like trying to find another print shop moments. I mean, that sounds inconsiderate, but you know what I mean when I say moments after your friends fucking just die. Yeah. I felt like I was cheating on them. You know what I mean? And I found this place that was literally a, a five minute walk from my house. Didn't even know they existed. They started picking up a lot of the work that the other shop obviously wasn't going to be doing anymore. Um, so I went in there, I developed a relationship with them. I talked about how, you know, I was going to be brought on to work with them over there. And then I was always sending in projects that were put together properly and lined up properly, which, you know, the, the average person is just like, I'd like this printed and they don't yeah. have any fucking idea how to set it up. Yeah. I would always send my shit over with leads and markings and all this shit. So one day I walked in and they were like, we need, we need someone to come on as needed. Um, do you want to do it? And the price was right. And the hours were right. And I was just like, fuck yeah, let's do this. Yeah. And there's a part of me, and this is going to sound cheesy as fuck, but there's a part of me that feels that what I'm doing now is in some way a tribute to them. So when I tell you that from the bottom of my heart, it makes me very, very happy to know that everybody out there listening that collects the shit that I make, it really, it keeps, it keeps me living. It keeps me living indoors and it keeps the memory of my friends in the front instead of the back, because I started this business. I started the, the front of this business by myself, but if it wasn't for those folks, I would never be doing what I'm doing now and you would never be enjoying what I'm putting out. So um, I, I, I'm not going to tell you that I don't have an ego about the fact that my shit's going well, but I'm also just as nervous that one day it won't anymore. So it keeps me at a nice, even keel uh, when I tell you I'm doing Blitzkrieg Series 2, I'm doing Limitless Series 4, I'm doing Proving Ground Series 2, I'm doing Cards Subject to Change. I'm going to be opening up commissions at some point in the next little while once I get shit under control to all of the wrestlers that want their own trading cards or maybe other promotions across the country that want to get their own trading cards because I do mail, uh, obviously. Um, I don't do a lot of international shit, but that doesn't mean that I won't consider it. Trust me, if somebody from Japan came to me and said, hey, can you do cards for us? You better bet your sweet bippy I'm going to be sending you. <laughs> you want some old, huh? Yeah. yeah, so you bet your sweet bippy I'll be sending the cards to Japan. <laughs> Uh, same thing with the, with the action figures and stuff like that. Like it's, this is all a journey that is only getting started. So you're a yeah. very busy guy. And I think the trading card community still would say, you know, thank you for doing what you're doing. It's like that because they're really enjoying it. They're really having a good time collecting the cards. There seems to be a lot of talk about it, especially on social media. Well, Twitter, the, the Twitter, on, the old, on the the old Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, you know, my message to everybody is this, keep having fun with the, with the hobby and, you know, if you keep buying them and they keep selling out at the places that I keep making them for, then we'll keep making more. You know, it's not it's not until they stop selling that we don't make any. Yeah, you got to limit your print runs, man. No, it, kept, it keeps the collectability like that, though. Don't 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 print more. Just do a new, a new I, series. I don't want I don't want to. I know cards subject to change. Like I said, there are some autograph cards that are like one in 50, which should probably tell you there's going to be. I don't know. Uh, he, we haven't talked about it, him and I, but if, if, if one, one in 50 is a limited card, you got to imagine we're probably going to release more than sets. that. For <laughs> sets. So, yeah. yeah. You know, now you're, you're doing, and you're doing pack format on that one. Yes. Is that's correct? the plan. Yeah. Uh, AG had always said that he wanted to do pack format. He said something about, you know, he, he gave me a rah-rah speech about not, doing like uh hobby boxes because traditionally they suck yeah um or doing full sets or or anything like that like okay, well tra right traditionally now. indie card sets traditionally are sold as a complete set you spend 25 30 bucks you get a 25 card set or a 30 card set whatever it is and you're done it's the beauty yep. of collecting indie cards over the last several years it's a one and done i'm great i'm tapped out i'm good maybe i have like one of two rare cards to go and get but that's where the trading comes in. It's like that. But for a base set, I can just be done with it. You guys are going the other route, which is I got to buy packs and creating that 
well, what did you get? And what did you get? And what did you get? And there's a trading aspect to it as well. Right. Which, you know, trading cards, yeah. you know, it's kind it's of, not, the it's not just name a catchy the name. <laughs> you know, we don't write it on the package because yeah. they're fucking assholes. Yeah. You know, like, it's not just a catchy the, name. It's what we do. It's like, well, so wait a minute. Who's playing the shitty Beatles? Are they yeah. any good? Yeah. No, no. no they're, so it's not just a clever nickname. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not a clever nickname. <laughs> uh, uh, making a sequel to that movie, by the way. Um, are they? They're doing another Wayne's World? Uh, it's, but, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. I suppose they're doing another one. And another, uh, speaking of another music one, they're doing another Spinal Tap. Oh, that'll be fun. They still can't find the stage all these yeah, years later. That's right. Coming out in 2024. Something is burning, and I don't know what it is, but um, hopefully the wife's getting it. Um, yeah, it's interesting. So uh, it's all good stuff, man. See, I can't you're wait. ahead of the game. You're ahead of the game. You have a wife. That's right. Uh, you know, I never thought I would have one, but I do. Only uh, three years in the, uh, together so far. But um, yeah, interesting stuff. Always wanted to know about this kind of thing. Been trying for a long time to get you on. I'm so happy you're able to come on and spend some time. I know you're a super busy dude. Uh, I'm looking forward to this stuff coming out. I desperately, we'll talk more off air, but I desperately need to get checklists and information from you. I want to be able to archive all of the stuff that you've done so that it can be there. It's, it's, you know, I talked about this with, uh, with, with Chuckster, uh, Chuckster is one of as our lead archivist for this stuff in the beginning of the years, it was all me. I did everything. I did the website design. Uh, it was based on my personal card collection, everything. And then I got David Porto, we became part owner of the stuff. Then it sat dormant for a long time. Now I've got Chuckster, we've got Paul, we've got Armand. We've got a great team of people who go out and they, they, they gather all the information from all over the place, all over the world for cards. And it's like, well, Chuckster said something kind of to me the other day, uh, a few weeks ago saying, you know, I'm in my 60s and I'm hoping that, you know, if I want to leave a legacy on this planet, you know, for me, I've had a, wrestling has been my whole life collecting things yeah. of wrestling and cards especially so if i like to leave that wtc becomes part of my my legacy you know hopefully that people can decades down the road after i'm gone still get useful information on this hobby and so yeah. i'm like you know what that's 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 true chuck sir i mean obviously i want to kind of leave the same thing for the for the whole uh you know the card community because i started this thing and i love to be able to just give it to someone else down the road to continue on and having all information there and talking to great people like yourself who put out some great stuff over the years of getting it all accurate, getting all information as much as possible. So people really know all about, there is about these cards. Yeah. So I, I, I'm hoping that somewhere down the road, I start to, we will change emails back and forth of just like saying, Hey, you know, can you send me the checklist of what you got? I mean, I can go on your Facebook page right now and kind of get an idea uh, mm -hmm. of what's there, but well, kind of, yeah, I, I, know, I, we yeah. I love if I can get if I can get print runs. I mean, whatever information you have, it's not required. Just the more information you're willing to share, the better it is for a collector to know what's out there. I mean, nine times out of ten, I could probably tell you everything, but like there are some things that even I don't remember, like how many sets exist of you know whatever. Like sure. I only happen to know Blitzkrieg because well, we just fucking did. Yeah. Um, but like when somebody asked me how many limitless series ones are there, and I'm like, I don't know, like 20 to 30, I think. Uh, same thing with two, you know, three, maybe a little more. I don't know. Um, offhand. Well, uh, the, the sooner know. I get the information from you before you start taking more chair shots, the better I, <laughs> I feel. Oh, I'm retiring from the ring in December. <laughs> I. I, 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 much like what your friend said about leaving a legacy, I used to worry about that shit. I used to worry that if I left, um, it would just crumble and die. And maybe that was a lot of ego, but there, there, there were times where I did teeter out the door and watched everything burn as I had to step back through the door yeah. and be like, all right, let's put this fucking fire out. Oh, fuck. It's been 16 years, you know? So, um, but now I know that leaving the, front of the camera and going back behind it that i have an incredible crew of people that will will take care of my baby for me so Good. i'm i'm not worried about that anymore so fuck hope no, uh, <laughs> well i mean for those who are watching and or listening to this like that uh where can people get all the information they need about cards subject to change um, you want to go to our Twitter, which fucking offhand is it card subject TC or cards STC? Somebody, 
quickly. I'm not really on the Twitter. Uh, all that <laughs> on the Twitter. On the Twitter. The funny thing is, is um, AG created it. it it's uh, your Twitter handle is Card Subject TC. Yes, um, I do. That's obviously for the cards. You'll see, yeah, Card Subject TC. Uh, if you want to hear anything about the wrestling promotion that I run or the toys uh, or anything of that matter, uh, it's Proving Ground HD on every platform for the most part. Um, we have a website, provinggroundbrand.com. Uh, we also have provinggroundstore.com, which will bring you to the store that will sell the card subject to change cards eventually as well as all of our other shit. Uh, BigDaddyTees.net, it's, we're currently in the um, opening stages of that. So we've only got like half a dozen designs up right now, but we've got like a hundred that we have to update the site with. Um, but yeah, you can find me in all those places. Uh, just don't add me on Facebook like you know me and everything will be fine. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I love everybody who comes to the shows and buys tickets and whatnot. But like, you know, when you're all adding me on my personal account, just like just like the page, like the Proving Ground page. We actually have a fan club on Facebook now, which is just a group uh, that I share shit in. So, you know, um, and, and I so recommend everybody go check out their cards. So to change Facebook page. It's mean, it's. It's got a lot of cool images and uh, of previous work that you guys have done like that. So I think it's a cool starting ground for a lot of uh, collectors out there. It also gives everybody an idea for if they want to get their own cards done. Like, hey, do you still have the template for? And then you've got the example. I think when I open up commissions again, I'm going to post um, pictures of templates that you can use. I mean, at a cost, obviously. But, sure. But, you know, I'm not really charging all that much the fact that i'm charging ten dollars to produce 20 cards is usually a pretty good deal yep um but yeah so there, there's going to be that as well so very very busy <laughs> looking forward to all of it sir all of it's uh, good stuff and i think collectors are excited about it very good but i got nothing else for you man man sound like everybody i've ever dated <laughs> okay <laughs> Bye. Bye. Dinner was great. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> yeah, go fuck someone else, I guess. You know, no, no, this was fun, man. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> yes, I, I appreciate it, man. So now we got to get Adam, uh, uh, I got to get um, um, uh, Anthony on as well at some point because I, I reached out to him a, a long time ago. I, I know he's a big card collector. Um, I had Heath uh, Slater on. He, I had Heath on for my first guest that I had on for talking about cards. Did not know at the time what a big card collector he was. Um, mm. huge card collector turns out, um, uh, and it's just interesting guys I've had on over the years. I've had, uh, I've had him, I've had Charlie Haas on, I've had Adam, you know, uh, Brian Clark on, I've had, uh, we having Kevin Nash. Ah, on. the bomb. Yeah. yeah. Having, right. I'll have Kevin Nash on pretty soon here. And I'm, I'm looking to probably work with, I'd probably get Kurt Angle on to talk a little bit. Collectible. That's right. Because you're the, you're the convention guy. Yeah. 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 So just uh, get some of these guys I work with that, uh, even, you know, just a few minutes just to talk about, uh, some stuff. I even had. And I go way back with Raven for almost 20 years and I had him on. It was like a, it was exactly what I expect to have from him. I, uh, from him, uh, I have a, a topic and we just don't ever talk about it. <laughs> you ask him what time it is and he tells you how to make the watch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, so, I've always loved Scotty for that reason. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's a character and I love him dearly. <laughs> But uh, hey guys, anything you want to know about uh, WrestlingTradingCards.com, you can find it at WrestlingTradingCards.com, of course. Uh, all of our social media stuff and ways to get a contact of us in the bottom of every single page of the website. We're soon coming up on almost a thousand checklists of stuff dating back from the 1800s all the way to current. Uh, also, as you guys know, this is our 20th anniversary this year. December 2nd will be our official 20th anniversary of WTC being in existence as WTC, even though it predates that a little a few years before that um appreciate the support you know guys like subscribe bitch complain whatever you want to do i don't care as long as you're engaging talking about stuff talking about the hobby uh you got some questions you know feel free to ask man we'll try to do our best to, to help you out with that i got nothing else man we're out Fuck hope 2022 <laughs> we're out if you want to play tough and want to hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you want to play tough and want to hate this I'll always show up